Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the You Talk Show. My name is Carl Rollinson. This is Horst Burkhart, and yes, you read it correctly. This is Man Week. Now, oh. some out there, some some out there may wonder why do we need to do Man Week. Well, you'll see. You'll you'll very soon find it. We are both men. As such, we are eminently qualified to speak on the experience of being men. And I would like to think that we haven't yet grown so inflexible in our old age that we are incapable of seeing the common ground that we share with folks who aren't men and the ways in which society is currently bending us all over a barrel. Yes, there is that. But this week, we specifically want to take a look at, well, basically us, men ourselves. All right, we actually want to provide something that is very much needed. So in order to really give you an understanding of the reason for this, I have to explain the logic behind these five episodes, the reason for it, how it came to be. I noticed that there are, in politics and in society, there are two, two camps essentially right now. All right, they're calling themselves, you know, right and left and all that. They're basically having, you know, two different viewpoints, both of them meat-headedly stupid. One is trying to sell gratification. The other one is trying to recruit them for no benefits to men. All right, young men need guidance. They need a way forward, especially because we have many problems that we're facing, problems that society, well, doesn't want to admit exist. And when it does, well, well, that's a problem in of itself. So let's get straight into it with this first episode and take an honest look at the problems that men face. So, unfortunately, um, to get a proper start on this, I'd like to give you a very brief history of feminism. And it's going to gloss over a shitload. At various points through the 1890s to 1920s, women fought for the right to vote, for the right to have a say in determining the way that their nations were run, uh, determining the way their futures would play out. They fought for the right to agency. In the 1960s to 1970s, um, something very, very horrible happened. Rich people realized that it would look really good if they started exploiting women in the same way that they exploit men. And slowly, they realize that the resentment that could build at such a social change was useful for making them even richer. But that was good, for the most part, because it meant that people who were skilled and able to work were able to enter the workplace without undue consideration being given to matters that didn't actually change anything, like whether they wore a skirt or pants. Actually, that's a lie. If you're a man in the 1970s, don't wear a skirt to a job interview. It's going to end badly. You're probably going to get beaten up. And in the 90s to 2000s, the cost of living rose. The rate at which workers were being paid did not really rise. And it became the norm for households to have 
um, both partners working. There was no such thing time. as a person who was a provider and a person who kept house. There was just two people scrambling to make ends meet and hoping that they found some time to curl up in front of the TV when they were done with work. Hmm. Something's gone very wrong here. And I'm going to argue that that is a violation of the social contract. See, to my mind, a lot of the problems that face men are painted as the result of women. Sometimes this is by people who have not had the best opportunities in life and who have reached for the first thing that looks blamable. Sometimes this is an engineered situation to cause division. In all cases, it conveniently diverts our attention from the fact that men and women have been disenfranchised by something far more sinister. A concentration of power and wealth in the hands of a very few who would like to keep it that way. I am a man. I have disabilities. For a start, if you spent any period of time watching any of the previous episodes, you'll probably notice I'm autistic as fuck. There's a few other things there, but suffice it to say that even in the ideal world that Homer Simpson lives in, where he can be a, a low-paid operator at a power plant and still be the sole provider and have a really nice house, even in that world, I wasn't going to be able to be a provider in the same way that a man would typically be expected to. That doesn't mean I don't have utility. That doesn't mean that I don't spend every day getting up and wanting to do something that is useful, not just to myself, but to society at large. That is a core part of my identity as a man, is to, to do things, to build things, and to maybe hope that some of those things will be spoken of after I'm dead. Mm. Um, I think that once upon a time, a, a lot of men had this aspiration. And I think maybe we don't encourage that so more because we don't encourage that so much anymore because the way that society has moved has encouraged us instead towards the short term pursuit of money so that we can keep our heads above water. And let me tell you, that's cooked. Kyle, what have you got there? I know you had a few other problems that you wanted to bring to bear, but I think yeah, I think the yeah, social you did, you did the touch I wanted. Yeah, you did touch upon one that I, I didn't have here but did want to talk about. Um, I didn't write it in my notes, but it is one that I wanted to talk about. Um, so I'm glad that you brought it up, and that's basically the economic situation. Um, now keep in mind for what I'm about to say, I'm not making any judgments. As I say, it, I'll give my judgments at the end. So since women entered the workforce, we've seen a doubling in the labor force yeah. and we've seen not quite as a result of that, but as a result of the manipulation of society that, that allowed, we have seen wages suppressed, like you talked yes. about. We have seen wages suppressed. We have seen um, society go from, you know, act actually one of the, one of my favorite examples given to me um, from a, another YouTuber, What If Old Hiss, who I highly recommend. Um, one of his favorite examples is that Homer Simpson reference. Mm -hmm. um, he was able to work a relatively low paid job and support a family with three kids. You know, even even back during the um, the late Middle Ages and, and feudal, you know, and feudalism was still a thing. You know, most men could support a family of, with of about three kids, sometimes more. You know, that was that was where the middle of society was. Now, granted, it's important society to point was out. very different back then. Than it's it important was. to point out at that time, though that uh, frequently you would hear of having families with many more kids than three kids. Mm. The quiet part that I'm going to say out loud is that most of those kids wouldn't survive to adulthood. It was a survival yes. strategy to have like nine kids in case, you know, two of them made it to old enough that they'd be able to help run the farm. Yeah, yeah. 
and like the you know the the expectation was that you maybe have seven kids and three of them would live you know sometimes yep. even more um and so you know those like that situation of you know the economic situation that we find ourselves in in our society that combines with the social situation um which is in part reinforced by the economic situation where women don't necessarily need men to provide for them to live. They don't really need that. You know, we have a welfare state now, a pretty good one, which I I mean, I'm going to point out that's a very good thing that women do not need men to provide because there were a lot of people in the, in the, well, everything before about the eighties, realistically, there are a lot of women who were trapped in, very abusive relationships because they didn't have options and giving them those options has been very important for keeping men accountable for bad behavior and making us be better men i agree i very much agree with that but that being said in agreeing with that we also have to recognize that that situation presents a problem and that's the first note that i've got here is that you know where where men are facing problems in their life regarding dignity and their place in society. And nobody wants to acknowledge this. Effectively. Yeah. Yeah. A crisis of identity. Who are we as men in society today? We, you know, we're lacking dignity. We're lacking a proper place in society that is well-defined and nobody wants to acknowledge these problems. Now, simultaneously, when we finally do get some sort of acknowledgement of these problems, well, essentially, we get blamed by those with the means to disseminate information for the problems that are hurting us. And we had no part in creating those problems, except in the sense that we were trying to help women, or at least, you know, our, our fathers, grandfathers, whatever, who made these changes were, you know, and, and who supported these, these positive changes for women, um, you know, who, who essentially, and those in power who you know, control the economic situation. I mean, I think that for the working class, Mm -hmm. trying to do the right thing and then getting shit on as a result is just a universal truth, no matter who you are. True, true. So, like, in some ways, the more things have changed, the more they've remained exactly the same. Yes. I mean, look, it's it's very very simple. You know, there's there's a, uh, you know, not to sound conspiratorial, but an elite class of people with a lot of wealth and power and their only real focus is maintaining that wealth and power at the exploitation and detriment. Well, I mean, this is something that has been demonstrated time and time again, economically. Yes, but I'm trying to imagine this from the perspective of somebody who hasn't really thought about this all that much. So it might seem conspiratorial to them, but, you know, well, this is Maybe another problem. Thinking. As a society, we're not encouraged to think about our problems too much, because quite frankly, we're not given the time to. Like, if yeah. you if you have time to lean, you have time to clean, and it's oh, more God, than just that. your low paid. It's more than just your low paid job at Macca's or Hungry Jacks. Yeah, it's see? a it's a mentality that has bled into every aspect of life. That if you have the time to sit and think and take a breath. You have the time to do something productive, and you should. Yeah, and and that I look, I don't like that mentality because it's it's very ex- exploitative. Yep. You know, we're being we're being exploited to high hell. We're seeing a an increase in the hours that we're working in a day, an increase in the days that we're working each week. It's not uncommon for people to work six days a week, sometimes seven. You know, I talked to my family recently because I was just trying to organize a barbecue. And you know how hard it was to organize a fucking barbecue simply because they were all working all the time? Like, they had, they each had one day a week off. One day. And none of and them And it was lost. different days. Yeah. You know, back 20 years ago, weekends were sacred. On a weekend, it was family time. It was your time. That is gone. Um, you know, we, and because of such things, because we don't have time in any given day, we used to, we used to work eight hours a day, but it was like, you arrive at that time, maybe even five minutes late. And it was fine. You know, there was no, like you weren't, you weren't, um, criticized for arriving five minutes late. You were basically on time. That's my view of the, of it. And that was the view 20, 30 years ago. Um, you know, around the time that I was, that I was, you know, 
shitting in diapers. Um, on top of that, you know, because, or rather because of that, because we, we don't have enough time in, in a day to, you know, to follow up on, on all of the things that in life we, we would have had 30 years ago, because we don't have a proper weekend anymore, you know, for men particularly, I mean, look, we this are goes socially isolated enlarged. and it makes us easier yeah. to exploit. Well, that's what I was, about, I was about to get to because, you know, this goes kind of for women as well. But again, you know, we're trying to take a look at, at men's problems and this is affecting men a lot more than women, actually. Um, and that we're, we're lonely, unhappy. We're feeling like we, we have no dignity. And on top of that, you know, because of uh, the rise of dating apps and social media, you know, people are shown the absolute, you know, pinnacle as though that's supposed to be the norm. You know, we're shown 10 out of 10. We get an impression of people that is untrue. We are given a, a that's, surface that's what level to. standard that we have to meet and that we cannot meet. It is... Yeah, basically, unless we're six foot tall and earning six figures, we are worthless in society. That is the impression that young men are being given. They need, they need to... They, the idea of that you need to be six foot tall and earning six figures is fucking ridiculous. And, and I'm just going to point out the median, the median wage and the and the average uh, wage or salary, the average earnings for a year is what sixty grand, sixty five grand now, and that was with a recent wage increase in Australia. Mm-hmm. That's not six figures. Half, like if that's the median, then half of people are earning below that. Okay, yet, so I just like to quickly point hold, out. Hold something. on, there's there's one more thing I need to get to. Um. You know, and this is this is talked about a lot more in depth by Waterfall Hist. Um, there's there's, you know, not only are we are we being shown this this like one percent of men that are like this is what men have to be, but you know, women are being shown that, and they are they are being given this this really bad expectation that that is the man they have to have, six foot tall, earning six figures, and it or preferably both. Essentially, well, it leads to basically, you know, 90, 95, maybe even 99% of women, you know, trying, competing for 1% of men. Look, look, you have Danny DeVito, right? You may not like it, but that is what peak male performance looks like. <laughs> he is a funny but, fucker. He is funny but, as, he is really, he is funny as fuck. But what I want to point out here is that this is, again, a, a reflection, um, we have had for many, many years, women have been shown this ideal of what they are expected to be, what they are expected to look like, how they are expected to perform. And they have been told that, you know, if you don't do this, you're not you're not enough of a woman. And mm. part of the reason that we are told that this is a problem of our making is because these traditions started when men were making a large amount of decisions and we now have this situation where we get to see how it feels and in dismissing that um we can either own this and we can say uh ah no no we need to fix this for everyone or we can keep screwing around and blaming each other and i think that a lot of people have benefited from the situation of screwing around and blaming each other and the ways in which men and women are both being disenfranchised just continues on unchallenged as a result of that. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's the way that like, essentially we, we see one of the biggest problems for men right now is in that lack of guidance. Mm -hmm. We're seeing, snake oil salesmen we're seeing you know false leaders false prophets as they used to call them um you know giving what is terrible advice and some of these false prophets are you know women who are uh, shut up. some of these some of these um false prophets are you know these these feminista types um uh, who you know they're giving really shit advice you know, it's like, how do I get a girlfriend? Um, just, you know, respect and don't rape women. Like, that For, is literally... 4chan has this. 4chan has this on lockdown. Be attractive, don't be unattractive. <laughs> See, that... 
That doesn't explain shit either. You know, like I know, that, right? Yeah. Our, our Zoom see, is about to end. We may need to start a separate recording and splice it together. Yeah, well, okay. Well, I'll say, I mean, this is very good already as, you know, this is an honest look at, at you know, our, our manly problems. So that, because the problems are, for men are basically... We've, we're lo- we've, we've either lost or are very much losing our place in society. Um, you know, I'm not talking about like status or position. I'm talking about like our role in society. Function. Who are we supposed Purpose. to be? What do we fun- yeah, what do we functionally be in society? And we're not being given any good advice on how to how to proceed, where to go from here. And so, you know, speaking of which, in the next Hello everyone. Zoom cut us short. I was going to describe the next episode which is an exploration of what men need to be happy. Tune in for that episode.